champs of examsnet welcome to the question series of examsnet i hope this series of detailed explanation is helping you a lot so in today's session we are going to discuss neat 2023 biology paper and we are a total of 100 questions here so let's quickly start the session first question is from the chapter plant growth and development and the question is which hormone promotes internode or petiole elongation in deep water rice options are kinetin ethylene 2,4-D and gibberellic acid and the correct answer will be option number B that is ethylene. So what is ethylene? It is a simple gaseous hormone, right? It is gaseous in nature and it has various influences on plants other than the one that is mentioned in this question, okay? So we know that it promotes internode or petiole elongation in deep water rice plants but other than this, it has various other roles as well. So let's list down the roles of ethylene on plants. So it initiates flowering in plants, initiates flowering, then it promotes root growth and root hair formation, okay, root growth and root hair formation which helps in the absorption of water right then it helps in horizontal growth of seedlings horizontal growth of seedlings then it promotes senescence and abscission of plant organs right senescence and abscission of plant organs especially leaves and flowers then it is highly effective in fruit ripening fruit ripening then it enhances respiration rate respiration rate during the ripening process okay during the ripening of fruit ripening of fruit And the last one is it breaks seeds and birds dormancy. Okay, seeds and bird dormancy. So you can see that ethylene has various roles. So one of the roles that is mentioned in the question is that of ethylene. So option B will be your correct answer. Question number two is from the chapter transport in plants and the question is movement and accumulation of ions across a membrane against their concentration gradient can be explained by option A facilitated diffusion, option B passive transport, option C active transport and option D osmosis. So the correct answer will be option number C that is active transport because we know that in case of active transport energy is required for the transport of molecules right right and why energy is required because the molecules have to move against their concentration gradient okay so the movement is from lower concentration lower concentration to the higher concentration right and therefore energy is required for this movement energy is required that is why option number c will be the correct answer question number three is from the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants and the question is large colorful fragrant flowers with nectar are seen in Options are bird pollinated plants, bat pollinated plants, wind pollinated plants and insect pollinated plants. So this is a very simple question. We know that this kind of flowers are seen in the insect pollinated plants because they attract the biotic pollinators that is insects. Okay, so option D will be the correct answer. Question number four is from the chapter plant growth and development and the question is in tissue culture experiments leaf mesophyll cells are put in a culture medium to form callus. This phenomena may be called as okay options are D differentiation development senescence and differentiation. So the correct answer will be option number A that is D differentiation 
right so what is de differentiation it is a phenomena let's write it down here it is a phenomena by which the living living differentiated plant cells differentiated plant cells that means the cells that have already lost the capacity to divide can regain can regain the capacity of division okay capacity of division under certain conditions so suppose we have some cells which cannot divide because they have lost the capacity to divide so we want to make them such that they can divide again so in order to do that we have to put that in culture medium right so this question mentioned an example of this phenomena where leaf mesophyll cells are put in a culture medium to form callus which is an uh, which is a mass of undifferentiated cells okay undifferentiated cells so that they can start dividing again right so option number a will be your correct answer question number 5 is from the chapter biodiversity and conservation and the question is the historic convention on biological diversity the earth summit was held in rio de janeiro in the year options are 1992 1986 2002 and 1985 so this is a direct question we know that this convention was held in the year 1992 and in this convention all the nations were called upon to take appropriate measures for the conservation of biodiversity and sustainable utilization of its benefits okay so option a will be your correct answer Question number six is from the chapter biotechnology principles and processes, and the question is: During the purification process for recombinant DNA technology, addition of chilled ethanol precipitates out. Options are DNA, histones, polysaccharides, and RNA. So, what will be the correct answer? Correct answer will be DNA because we know that during the isolation of genetic material, purified DNA. Let's write it down here. During the isolation, the isolation of genetic material genetic material what happens the purified dna purified dna ultimately precipitates out ultimately precipitates precipitates out after the addition of chilled ethanol the the addition of chilled ethanol so what is the correct answer option number a question number 7 is from the chapter photosynthesis in higher plants and the question is how many atp and nadph2 are required for the synthesis of one molecule of glucose during the calvin cycle okay so we know that for every carbon dioxide molecule for every carbon dioxide molecule that is entering the calvin cycle entering the calvin cycle how many atp and nadph2 are required so the number of atp required is three molecules right three molecules of atp and how many nadph2 nadph2 two molecules but this is for one calvin cycle but the question is not asked about the one cycle it is asked about the synthesis of one molecule of glucose so how many carbons are there in a glucose molecule six carbons so how many cycles are required six turns of cycle are required right so for six turns for six turns of cycle that is required to make one molecule of glucose how many atp will be required it will be 3 into 6 that is 18 molecules and how many nadph2 2 into 6 that is 12 molecules 
so number of atp is 18 and number of nadph2 required is 12 so 18 atp and sorry it's option number a right so 18 atp and 12 nadph2 that means option number a again is the correct answer question number 8 is from the chapter ecosystem and the question is in the equation gpp minus r equals to npp gpp is the gross primary productivity and npp is net primary productivity so r here is okay what is r options are respiratory quotient respiratory loss reproductive allocation and photosynthetically active radiation so what is gross primary productivity it is the total amount of carbon compound total amount of carbon compound compound produced during photosynthesis right produced by the photosynthesis synthesis of plants in an ecosystem in a given period of time given period of time now a considerable amount of this gpp is utilized or consumed during the respiration okay so when we subtract that amount that is consumed from the total amount that is produced will get the net primary productivity okay so gpp that is this total amount of carbon compound produced minus the amount that is lost during respiration equals to the net primary productivity that is npp okay which is left after this utilization so r is nothing but the respiratory loss respiratory loss that means the amount of gpp that is utilized during the respiration by plants okay so option b respiratory loss will be the, the correct answer question number nine is from the chapter biotechnology principles and processes and the question is in gene gun method used to introduce alien dna into host cells micro particles of metals are used okay so which metals are used options are zinc tungsten or gold silver and copper so the correct answer will be option number b that is tungsten and gold and why these metals are used as micro particles because these are inert in nature okay these are inert in nature so they don't alter the chemical composition of the cells okay they don't alter the chemical composition of the cells so option b is correct answer now question number 10 is from the chapter molecular basis of inheritance and the question is the phenomena of pleiotropism refers to option a presence of two alleles each of the two genes controlling a single trait option b a single gene affecting multiple phenotypic expression option c more than two genes affecting a single character and option d presence of several alleles of a single gene controlling a single crossover so the correct option will be option number b a single gene affecting multiple phenotypic expression so when a single gene affects multiple phenotypic expression that gene is known as pleiotropic gene right pleiotropic gene and the phenomena is known as pleiotropism so option b is the correct answer in this case question number 11 is from the chapter anatomy of flowering plants and the question is given below are two statements one is labeled as assertion a and the other is labeled as reason r according to assertion late wood has fewer xylary elements with narrow vessels and according to reason cambium is less active in winters so in light of the above statements choose the correct answer from the options given below right now we know that yes second statement that is reason is correct because in winter cambium is less active okay so let's write it down here cambium is less active in winters and therefore it forms fewer xylary elements fewer xylary elements 
with narrow vessels what kind of vessels narrow narrow vessels and this is known as late wood or autumn wood late wood or autumn wood so now you would have understood that both the statements are correct and reason is the correct explanation of assertion so option number d both a and r are true and r is the correct explanation of a will be the correct answer question number 12 is from the chapter cell cycle and cell division and the question is among eukaryotes replication of dna takes place in options are s phase g1 phase g2 phase and m phase so we know that the correct sequence of these phases is g1 phase then s phase then g2 phase and at last we have m phase or the mitosis so what happens in the g1 phase we know that this is the interval between mitosis and initiation of dna replication okay so after mitosis we have to again start with g1 phase right so g1 is nothing but the interval between interval between m phase m phase and then s phase okay initial part of s phase initiation of dna replication that means it is clear that during s phase dna replication will take place what else happens during the g1 phase so during this phase the cell is metabolically active okay cell is metabolically active and grows okay and it grows continuously but does not replicate its dna whereas in the next phase that is s phase the replication of dna takes place replication of dna takes place so the amount of dna per cell doubles but there is no change in the chromosome number okay then comes the g2 phase so during g2 phase g2 phase what happens there is synthesis of protein okay so protein synthesis takes place in preparation for mitosis preparation for mitosis and the growth of cell also continues during this phase and the last one is m phase that is mitosis so actual cell division takes place so according to this question replication of dna that is s phase will be the correct answer option number a question number 13 is from the chapter morphology of flowering plants and the question is family fabiaceae differs from solanaceae and liliaceae with respect to stamens pick out the characteristics specific to family fabiaceae but not found in solanaceae or liliaceae liliaceae okay so the correct option will be option number d diadelphus and dithecus anthers okay this is specific for which family fabiaceae and which type of stamens are found in solanaceae solanaceae in this polyandrous polyandrous epipetalous and dithecus anther are found dithecus anther whereas in case of liliaceae liliaceae polyandrous polyandrous epiphyllous and again dithecus anther are found okay so can you now compare these three right so option d is your correct answer question number 14 is again from morphology of flowering plants and the question is exile presentation is observed in option a china rose beans and lupin option b tomato dianthus and pea option c china rose petunia and lemon and option d mustard cucumber and primrose so the correct answer is option number c china rose petunia and lemon okay so these three show exile presentation now what are other types of presentation one of them is free central presentation free central presentation 
and where is it found it is found in dianthus and primrose okay dianthus and primrose then we have marginal placentation marginal placentation it is found in peas pea lupin and beans and then we have another type of placentation known as parietal present placentation okay parietal placentation it is found in cucumber and mustard so according to this question option number c is your correct answer now question number 15 is from the chapter plant kingdom and the question is identify the pair of heterosporous pteridophytes among the following options are selaginella and salvinia then xylotum and salvinia then option c is equisetum and salvinia and the last one is lycopodium and selaginella so the correct answer will be option number a that is selaginella and salvinia okay they are heterosporous pteridophytes that means they contain or consists of two different types of spores okay two different types of spores whereas other options that is xylotum equisetum and lycopodium are examples of homosporous pteridophytes okay homosporous that is they contain only one kind of spores right so option a is correct answer question number 16 is from the chapter environmental issues and the question is the thickness of ozone in a column of air in the atmosphere is measured in terms of options are decibels decameter kilo base and dobson units so this is very simple we know that the thickness of ozone in a column of air from ground to the top of atmosphere is measured in terms of dobson units that is written as du okay what is decibel it is the unit in which noise or sound is measured okay then so here noise is measured decameter is related to length okay length is measured in decameter um, that means decameter is one of the various units that are used for length then kilo base is related to the length of dna or rna okay dna or rna so this is a unit that is used at molecular level because these uh, dnas or rnas consist of different types of bases right so according to this question which one is the correct answer option number d now question number 17 is from the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants and the question is what is the function of tassels in the corn cob options are to trap pollen grains then to disperse pollen grains then to protect the seeds and the last one is to attract insects so this is very simple again we have uh, seen that the tassels look like this okay like this hairy structures right so these keep waving in air okay these are the tassels and these are nothing but the stigma and style stigma and style which wave in the wind to trap the pollen grains okay they wave in the wind to trap the pollen grains so which kind of pollination takes place wind pollination okay this is an example of wind pollination so which is the correct answer option number a to trap to tap the pollen grains question number 18 is from the chapter plant kingdom and the question is given below are two statements one is labeled as assertion a and the other is labeled as reason r assertion is that the first stage of gametophyte in the life cycle of a moss is protonema stage and the reason says that protonema develops directly from the spores produced in the capsule okay so in the light of the above statements choose the most appropriate answer from the options given below right now let's see we know that gametophyte is the predominant stage of the life cycle of a moss okay 
gave me two fight is gave me two fight it is the predominant stage predominant stage of the life cycle of moss okay and it further consists of two stages what are these stages first one is the protonema stage protonema this is the first stage and the second one is the leafy stage so what is protonema it is a creeping creeping green branched and frequently filamentous stage okay frequently filamentous that is multicellular stage and it develops directly from the spores okay so this is the most important line it develops directly from the spores so why is it the first stage because it develops directly from the spores so we can say uh, we can see that the assertion is correct that first stage of gametophyte in the life cycle of moss is protonema stage and the reason is also correct that protonema develops directly from the spores produced in the capsules okay so these spores are produced in the capsules so this is also correct and reason is correct explanation of a so this option number d will be the correct answer but let's discuss about the leafy stage as well okay so we know that leafy stage develops from where from the secondary protonema from secondary protonema as a lateral bud as a lateral bud and how does it looks so it consist of consist of upright upright slender axis bearing spirally arranged leaves okay so it bears spirally arranged leaves arranged leaves now what is the importance of this leafy stage this stage bears the sex organs okay so it bears the sex organs but the question was asked about the protonema stage so option number d is the correct answer according to this okay now question number 19 is from the chapter transport in plants and the question is given below are two statements according to statement 1 the forces generated by transpiration can lift a xylem sized column of water over 130 meters height yes this is a correct statement because measurements reveal that the forces generated by transpiration can create a pressure which is sufficient to lift a xylem sized column of water up to this height 130 meters okay so this is correct now let's come to the second statement it says that transpiration cools the leaf surfaces sometimes 10 to 15 degrees evaporative cooling this is also correct what happens in transpiration there is evaporation of water from the leaves right so waters are evaporated and they, this leads to cooling of the surface of the leaf which can be so this decrease in temperature or cooling can be up to 10 to 15 degrees okay this is evaporative cooling so this statement is also correct both are correct right so both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct that means option d will be your correct answer question number 20 is from the chapter plant growth and development and the question is spraying of which of the following phytohormone on juvenile conifers helps hastening the maturity period that leads to early seed production options are gibberellic acid zeatin abscisic acid and indole 3 butyric acid so the correct answer is gibberellic acid okay what does it do it speeds up the maturity process so that the seeds are produced early right so this is not the only function of gibberellic acid other than this it has various effects on the plants for example let's list down some of them so it causes increase in the length of axis okay increase in the length of axis 
and where is it used it is used to increase the length of grape stalk okay so this is one of the examples increase in the length of grape grapes stalks okay then the next one it it causes the fruits to elongate okay so it causes elongation of fruits and thus it improves their shape okay so elongation of fruits and improvement in its shape improvement in shape and the example of such fruits are apples okay apple then the next one is that it delays senescence delays senescence thus fruits can be left on the tree for a longer period of time so as to extend the market period okay then the next one is it is used to increase the length of which stem sugar cane okay so increase in length of sugar cane stem thus it increases the yield thus increasing the yield of sugar cane by as much as as much as 20 tons per acre 20 tons per acre so this is how effective gibberellic acid is okay then the next one is it also promotes bolting it promotes bolting that is internode elongation just prior to flowering okay so in which plants in beet cabbages and many other plants okay and many others so you can see that how useful gibberellic acid is right question number 21 is from the chapter principles of inheritance and variation and the question is frequency of recombination between gene pairs on same chromosome as a measure of the distance between genes to map their position on chromosome was used for the first time by options are sutton and bogri alfred sturtevant henking and thomas hunt morgan so which is the correct answer option a uh, sorry option b that is alfred sturtevant okay so use the frequency of recombination between gene pairs on same chromosome not on different chromosomes as a measure of distance between the genes and then he mapped their position on the chromosome okay so let's discuss about other scientists as well first when one is sutton and bogri so what did he do he proposed the chromosomal theory of inheritance right so proposed the chromosomal theory theory of inheritance then option c that is henking discovered x chromosome okay so he discovered x chromosome and the last one is thomas hunt morgan so he proved the chromosomal theory of inheritance okay he proved the chromosomal theory of inheritance that was proposed by sutton and bogri right and he proposed the concept of linkage thomas hunt morgan proposed the concept of linkage so according to the statement mentioned in the question the correct answer is alfred sturtevant question number 22 is from the chapter molecular basis of inheritance and the question is expressed sequence tags that is ests refers to options are all genes that are expressed as proteins no then the second option is all genes whether expressed or unexpressed no that is not true because as the name suggests it must be expressed okay it cannot remain unexpressed then the third option is certain important expressed genes it is also incorrect and the last one says all the genes that are expressed as rna yes this is the correct definition of expressed sequence tags okay so this is a very direct question right option number d is the correct answer 
Now let's move to the next question. Question number 23. It is from the chapter Biotechnology Principles and Processes. And the question is, upon exposure to UV radiation, DNA stained with ethidium bromide will show. Options are bright blue color, bright yellow color, bright orange color and bright red color. So the answer is bright orange color. Okay. So it is basically a process of recombinant DNA technology. Okay. What are we talking about? We are talking about recombinant DNA technology. So in this technology, one of the processes is agarose gel electrophoresis, which is used to separate the DNA fragments. Okay. So we perform agarose gel electrophoresis. And it is done to separate the DNA fragments. Okay. For the separation of DNA fragments. But we know that these fragments will be very small. So we have to visualize them. And how can we do that? So these separated DNA fragments can be visualized only after staining the DNA with a substance known as ethidium bromide. Okay. So ethidium bromide. Staining with ethidium bromide. Okay. Staining with ethidium bromide. So after that what we have to do we have to expose it to the UV radiation. Okay. So this staining with ethidium bromide will be followed by exposure to UV radiation. Exposure to UV that is ultraviolet radiation. And then you can see bright orange colored bands of DNA. Okay. Bright orange colored bands of DNA can be easily seen now. Okay. So which option is the correct one? Option number C is the correct answer. Question number 24 is from the chapter respiration in plants and the question is given below are two statements. One is labeled as assertion A and the other is labeled as reason R. So again it is an assertion reason type question. Let's see the assertion. It says that ATP is used at two steps in glycolysis. So yes, this is a correct statement because there are two steps in the process of glycolysis where ATP is utilized. Then the reason says that first ATP is used in converting glucose into glucose 6-phosphate and second ATP is used in conversion of fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-diphosphate or bisphosphate. Okay. So yes, this is also correct. What are the two steps where ATP is utilized first in the conversion of glucose into glucose 6 phosphate right glucose 6 phosphate so you can see that in glucose there was no phosphate group but when it is converted into glucose 6 phosphate one phosphate group has been added at sixth position okay 6 phosphate means at sixth carbon phosphate group has been added then the second step at which atp is utilized is in the conversion of fructose fructose 6 phosphate into fructose 1 6 diphosphate or bisphosphate. So here also you can see that fructose 6 phosphate had a phosphate group okay only one phosphate group but when it is converted into fructose 1 6 diphosphate one more fructose has been added at first position also. Okay, so in both these steps, phosphate group has been added. Okay, there has been addition of phosphate group. And what is it known as? It is known as phosphorylation. Okay, this is known as phosphorylation. That means addition of phosphate group to the substrates. So these ATP are utilized in the phosphorylation process. Okay. So both assertion and reason are true and reason is the correct explanation of assertion. Option D is the correct answer. Question number 25 is from the chapter molecular basis of inheritance and the question is 
unequivocal proof that DNA is the genetic material was first proposed by options are Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase, Avery MacLeod and M. C. Carthy, and Wilkins and Franklin, and the last one is Frederick Griffith. So, which is the correct answer? Option A, right? Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase, because the unequivocal proof of DNA being the genetic material came from the experiment of these two scientists. Okay. What did other scientists do? So, option number B, that is Avery MacLeod and M. C. Carthy, they gave the biochemical characterization of transforming principles. Okay. So, let's write it down here. Biochemical characterization, characterization of transforming principles. which was performed using the mice. Then the next one is Wilkins and Franklin. So they produced X-ray diffraction data of DNA. Okay. X-ray diffraction data of DNA. And the last one is Frederick Griffith. So what do what did they do? They performed the transformation experiments using pneumococcus, okay? Pneumococcus bacteria. So transformation experiments using which bacteria? Pneumococcus bacteria. So I hope this is clear to you. Option A is the correct answer according to the statement mentioned in this question. Now question number 26 is from the chapter ecosystem and the question is identify the correct statement. So let's see the statements one by one. Statement A says that detrivores perform fragmentation. Yes, this is a correct statement. Okay, so detrivores break down the dead organic matter into various small fragments okay so they perform fragmentation then the next statement says the humus is further degraded by some microbes during mineralization this is also correct okay then the third statement says that water soluble inorganic nutrients go down into the soil and get precipitated by a process called leaching so this is also a correct statement okay then the fourth statement says that the detritus food chain begins with living organisms. Not at all because we know that detritus food chain starts operating once the organism dies. Okay, So it begins with dead organic matter. Dead organic matter. Not living organisms. Okay, So this is incorrect. Then the fifth and the last statement says that earthworms break down detritus into smaller particles by a process called catabolism. So is catabolism performed by earthworms? No. So who performs the catabolism? Catabolism is performed by the saprotrophic, saprotrophic microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi. Okay, Bacteria and fungi. So this is also incorrect. Which ones are correct that we have to tell? So A, B and C were correct and D and E were not correct. Okay, so we have to answer the correct statements. That means A, B and C only. So option D will be the correct answer. Question number 27 is from the chapter photosynthesis in higher plants. And the question is the reaction center in PS2 has an absorption maxima at Options are 700 nanometer, 660 nanometer, 780 nanometer and 680 nanometer. So which one is the correct answer? Option D. Okay. We know that photosystems, photosystems are of two types. First photosystem 1 that is PS1 and the second photosystem 2 that is PS2. And we know that the reaction center chlorophyll has an absorption peak at 700 nanometer in case of PS1. Whereas in case of PS2, the reaction center has an absorption maxima at 680 nanometer. Okay, so the question has been asked about PS2, so 680 nanometer will be the correct answer. 
question number 28 is from the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants and the question is in angel sperm the haploid diploid and triploid structures of a fertilized embryo sac sequentially are okay so first one should be haploid second one should be diploid and the third one should be triploid okay so options are first one is antipodals synergids and primary endosperm nucleus so this is not correct because synergids are haploids okay but we have to find out the sequence in which the first one is haploid the second one is diploid and the third one is triploid okay then the second option is synergids yes this is haploid then zygote yes it is diploid and then the primary endosperm nucleus this is triploid yes this is the correct answer then option number c is synergids antipodals and polar nuclei this is incorrect and the last one is also incorrect because synergid is haploid then primary endosperm nucleus is triploid and zygote is diploid this is not the correct sequence so only correct sequence is option number b synergids zygote and primary endosperm nucleus okay so synergids if we talk about the synergids these are the cells of gametophyte right cells of gametophyte and therefore these are haploid and the next one that is zygote how is it formed it is formed by the fusion of two gametes fusion of two gametes and therefore it is diploid and then the last one primary endosperm nucleus that is pen it is formed by the fusion of fusion of diploid diploid secondary nucleus secondary nucleus with a male gamete isn't it with a male gamete so diploid secondary nucleus that is 2 and one male gamete that is 1 so 2 plus 1 3 therefore this is triploid in nature okay so this is the correct sequence next question is from the chapter mineral nutrition and the question is which micronutrient is required for splitting of water molecule during photosynthesis options are molybdenum magnesium copper and manganese so the answer is none other than manganese okay so it plays a major role in the splitting of water okay it helps in splitting of water and thus it helps in the liberation of oxygen during photosynthesis okay so when water molecule splits oxygen is liberated so liberation of oxygen during the process of photosynthesis now let's talk about other options as well molybdenum is included in which metabolism nitrogen metabolism right nitrogen metabolism next one is magnesium so it activates several enzymes that are involved in photosynthesis and respiration so it is involved in activation of activation of several enzymes in photosynthesis photosynthesis and respiration and the last one is copper so it is essential for the overall metabolism in the plants okay it is very important for overall metabolism in plants so what is the correct answer here option number d manganese next question is from the chapter cell cycle and cell division and the question is which of the following stages of meiosis involves division of centromere okay so we are talking about meiosis here now in which stage centromere is divided or in which stage the centromere splits so it is the anaphase 2 okay in case of mitosis simply anaphase and in case of meiosis specifically anaphase 2 not anaphase 1 is the stage where the centromere splits okay so option b is the correct answer let's talk about other options as well metaphase 1 and 2 both let's write it down here metaphase during the metaphase 
1 as well as metaphase 2 what happens the chromosomes are aligned at the equator okay so alignment of chromosomes take place alignment of chromosomes at the equator takes place and then we have telophase so what happens at the telophase this is the last phase right and during this phase chromosomes reach the respective poles chromosomes reach the respective poles so obviously metaphase 1 metaphase 2 and telophase cannot be the correct answer option b anaphase 2 will be the correct answer Now next question is from the chapter biomolecules and the question is cellulose does not form blue color with iodine because okay so what is cellulose it is a polysaccharide you must be knowing this it is polysaccharide and it does not form blue color with iodine why so let's see the options first one is that it is a helical molecule no we know that polysaccharides are not helical molecule DNA is helical right so nucleic acid is helical not polysaccharide so this is incorrect option then the second one is it does not contain complex helices and hence it cannot hold the iodine molecules yes this is correct statement okay third one says that it breaks down when iodine reacts with it this is also incorrect and the last one is it is disaccharide it is clearly incorrect because it is polysaccharide not disaccharide okay so it does not contain complex helices and therefore it cannot hold the iodine molecules right so this is your correct answer option number B question number 32 is from the chapter biodiversity and conservation and the question is among the evil quartet which one is considered the most important cause driving extinction of species okay option a over exploitation for economic gain option B alien species invasion option C coextinction and option D habitat loss and fragmentation so we know that this uh, the most important cause that is leading to the extension of species is none other than habitat loss and fragmentation others are also important causes but this is the most important one because with each passing day population is increasing okay so population increase population increase is leading to clearing up of forests okay so forests are being cleared out okay clearing of forests and why they are cleared for the development processes okay development processes such as construction of roads over bridges buildings etc okay and due to this the organisms are losing their habitat okay so this leads to habitat loss and fragmentation so since the rate of this is very fast therefore this is the most important cause here option d will be your correct answer question number 33 is from the chapter molecular basis of inheritance and the question is what is the role of rna polymerase 3 in the process of transcription in eukaryotes okay so let's talk about the rna polymerase enzymes we know that in case of eukaryotes there are three major types of rna polymerases okay first one is your rna polymerase 1 polymerase 1 so what does it transcribe it transcribes 5.8s 18s and 28s are rnas then the second one that is rna polymerase 2 transcribes hnrna what is hnrnas these are the precursors of mrna right precursors of messenger rna and then comes the last one rna polymerase 3 about which the question has been asked it transcribes trna that is transfer rna then 5s rrna ribosomal rna and sn rna okay small nuclear rna so which one should be the correct answer option a 
tRNAs, 5srRNA and snRNA. Question number 34 is from the chapter Anatomy of Flowering Plants and the question is given below are two statements. So again a statement based question. First statement says that in dark and exarc are the terms often used for describing the position of secondary xylem in the plant body. No, this is incorrect because these are the terms which are used for describing the position of primary xylem. Primary xylem in the plant body, not the secondary xylem. Okay. Then the second statement says exarc condition is the most common feature of the root system. Yes, this is a correct statement. So we know that the primary xylem, primary xylem is of two types, right? First one is protoxylem, protoxylem, and the second one is metaxylem. Now, on the basis of relative positions of protoxylem and metaxylem in the organ, the arrangement of primary xylem can be in dark or exarc. Okay. So, in case of in dark, what happens? The protoxylem, protoxylem, is directed towards the center, and metaxylem is directed towards the periphery. Right. Whereas in case of exarc, just the opposite happens. The protoxylem is directed towards the periphery and metaxylem is directed towards the center. Okay, and this exarc system is common in roots of the plants. Okay, roots of the plant. So, statement 1 is incorrect and statement 2 is correct. Okay. So, let's see which one is the correct one. Option number C, statement 1 is incorrect but statement 2 is true. So, option C is the correct answer. Question number 35 is from the chapter cell cycle and cell division. And the question is the process of appearance of recombination nodules occurs at which sub stage of prophase 1 of meiosis. Okay. Prophase 1 in meiosis. Options are pachytene, diplotene, diakinesis and zygotene. So, which stage is this? We are talking about the pachytene here. Okay. Because the process of recombination occurs at pachytene stage of prophase 1 and therefore it is characterized by the appearance of recombination nodules. So, option A will be the correct answer. And now we are starting section B of botany. So the first question of this section is from the chapter plant kingdom and it is again an assertion and reason based question. So let's read the assertion. It says that in gymnosperms the pollen grains are released from the microsporangium and carried by air currents. Okay. So yes we know that microsporangiums bear the male gametophyte that is pollen grains which are released from here and carried by air currents. So this is a correct statement. Now let's come to the reason. It says that air currents carry the pollen grains to the mouth of Archegonia. Yes, where the male gametes are discharged and pollen tube is not formed. So this last part of this statement is clearly incorrect because we know that the formation of pollen tube is very important here. Okay. So till here the statement is correct that the air currents carry the pollen grains into the mouth of Archegonia. What is Archegonia? This is nothing but the female sex organ, right? Female sex organ which is present in the ovules. So here the male gametes are discharged, but it is only after the formation of pollen tube. Okay. Therefore, this statement is incorrect. So which one will be the correct answer? Assertion is correct. Reason is incorrect, right? So A is true, but R is false. Option B will be the correct answer. Question number 37 is from the chapter environmental issues and the question is which one of the following statements is not correct. Okay. So let's check one by one. First statement says that algal blooms caused by excess of organic matter in water improves water quality and promotes fisheries. Absolutely incorrect this statement is. Why? Because we know that algal blooms are harmful for water bodies. Okay. 
so what happens they deteriorate the quality of water okay they do not improve the water quality and they are also harmful for fishes because it makes hard for them to find their food okay so fishes as well as other aquatic animals can even die in such conditions so this is incorrect statement okay now let's move to the second statement it says water hyacinth grows abundantly in eutrophic water bodies what is eutrophic it is a condition in which there is an excess of nutrients in water bodies okay excess of nutrients so obviously when there are excess of nutrients they will grow abundantly okay and it will lead to an imbalance in an ecosystem dynamics of the water because one organism is growing abundantly okay so this will be uh, proving harmful to other organisms of the water so this is a correct statement then we come to the third statement it says the amount of some toxic substances of industrial waste water increases the organism increases in the organisms at successive trophic levels yes so for smaller organisms the amount of toxic substance will be low okay suppose a bigger organism consumes many such smaller organisms then obviously all these smaller organisms are having some amount of this toxic substance so the overall toxic substance will be increased in the next trophic level okay similarly in the next trophic level the amount will further increase okay these are toxic chemicals so toxic sub, uh, the amount of toxic uh, toxic substances is increasing continuously as we are moving from one trophic level to another okay so this is also a correct statement then let's come to the last statement it says that the microorganisms involved in biodegradation of organic matter in a sewage polluted water body consume a lot of oxygen causing the death of aquatic organisms this is also correct because the aquatic organisms will not get enough oxygen for them okay so the only incorrect statement is the first one so option a will be correct answer because here we had to find the incorrect statement okay all the other statements are correct now let's move to question number 38 it is from the chapter photosynthesis in higher plants and the question is which of the following combinations is required for chemiosmosis okay so let's check first option is membrane proton pump proton gradient and nadp synthase so the first three are correct but nadp synthase is not correct because we need an atp synthase enzyme okay atp synthase enzyme that helps to synthesize atp okay so first option is not correct let's move to the second option it says proton pump electron gradient and atp synthase see we know we need proton pump and proton gradient not electron gradient okay so again this is incorrect then the third option is proton pump electron gradient again incorrect because electron gradient is not required proton gradient is required as well as nadp synthase is also incorrect because we need atp synthase okay so let's move to the last option now it says membrane proton pump proton gradient and atp synthase so yes these are the correct members of chemiosmosis okay or the correct components of chemiosmosis so option d will be the correct answer question number 39 is from the chapter cell cycle and cell division here we have to match list 1 with list 2 so in list 1 we have various phases of cell cycle so let's represent these phases here okay first one is g1 phase then s phase then g2 phase and then comes the m phase okay so this is the sequence now let's see the first one is m phase that is mentioned in list 1 so m means what m means mitosis in this phase the actual cell division takes place cell division and this is also known as equational division okay mitosis is also known as equational division therefore which will be the correct match for a it will be fourth number equational division okay so the match for a will be number 4 now let's come to the second one it is g2 phase so what happens in g2 phase c g2 comes after the synthesis phase okay s phase is the synthesis phase and during this dna replication takes place dna replication and after this comes g2 phase during which we know that the dna is not replicating okay so what happens during this phase proteins and other molecules are formed okay so let's write it down here during g2 phase dna synthesis stops dna synthesis stops but the cell synthesizes 
RNA, protein, etc. Okay, so RNA, protein, etc. are synthesized. So the DNA is not synthesized, but these molecules such as RNA or protein are synthesized during G2 phase. So protein are synthesized will be the correct match for this. Okay, so the match for B will be number one. Now the third one is quiescent stage. So quiescent is also known as G1 stage. Okay, so some of the cells they exit the G1 phase and they enter an inactive stage known as G0 phase. Okay, so here these cells are not dividing, but mm -hmm. they are ready for division and they can start dividing once they get the signal to do so. Okay, so this is an inactive phase, so the match for this will be two. Okay, match for C will be number two. and the last one is g1 phase so you can see that this g1 phase is the interval between m phase and the s phase okay so this is the interval between mitosis and initiation of dna replication so the correct match for d will be number 3 okay this is number 3 so let's see which is the correct match a4 then b1 so this one option number b will be your correct answer Question number forty is from the chapter Organisms and Population. Here we have to match list one with list two. In list one we have types of interaction between the organisms, and in list two we have the effects of such interaction on the species A and B. Okay, so let's write it down here. Interaction will mention below this, and then the effects on species A and species B. First one is the mutualism. First type of interaction is mutualism so in this type of interaction both the interacting species are benefited okay and we put a plus sign for benefit so plus plus will be there okay because a as well as b are benefited so which will be the correct match for a number 4 okay plus plus then the next one is commensalism common salism in this type of interaction only one species is benefited and the other species is neither benefited nor harmed okay it remains unaffected so the first one is benefited and the other remains unaffected that means zero so plus zero that means first one will be the correct match for b okay then we have amensalism amensalism this is just the opposite of commensalism in this the first species is harmed and the second remains un Uh, affected okay so this is minus 0 so which will be the correct match for this second one minus and 0 okay this is for c and the last one is parasitism 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 so in this what happens one is harmed and the other is benefited okay so this is a plus minus type of interaction that means third one will be the correct match for d okay so Our, according to this which one will be the correct answer option a a4 then b1 c2 and d3 okay option a is the correct answer question number 41 is from the chapter organisms and populations again and uh, this is a statement based question so the first statement says that gauss's competitive exclusion principle states that two closely related species competing for same resources cannot coexist indefinitely and competitively inferior one will be eliminated eventually so this is a correct statement okay and this is from ncrt and it is a complete explanation of the gauss's competitive exclusion principle right so it says that when there are two closely related species let's say s1 and s2 and these are competing for the same resource then both of them cannot coexist indefinitely and at the end only one can emerge as the winner okay so which one will emerge as the winner the one which is competitively superior so let's say that species 1 is competitively superior one and the species 2 the second one is competitively inferior one then at last the competitively superior one will emerge as the winner and it will be able to survive okay whereas the competitively inferior one will be eliminated eventually and it will not be able to survive okay so now let's move to the second statement the first was correct okay second statement says that in general carnivores are more adversely affected by competition than herbivores no 
the opposite is true this one is incorrect because herbivores are more adversely affected okay herbivores are more adversely affected by competition because they have less alternatives available okay so statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is false so option b will be the correct answer question number 42 is from the chapter mineral nutrition here we have to match list 1 and list 2 so let's see the first mineral that is mentioned in list 1 is iron now we know that iron activates the which enzyme catalase enzyme okay let's write it down here iron activates catalase enzyme so which one will be the correct match for a it will be number 3 okay then the second one is zinc so zinc is needed in the synthesis of auxin hormone okay so one num, uh, first one will be the match for zinc okay so let's write it down here zinc is needed for synthesis of auxin then the third one is boron so when boron is required it is required for cell elongation and cell differentiation cell elongation and cell differentiation so the fourth one is the correct match for c and the last one is molybdenum okay molybdenum so this is a component of nitrogenase okay it is a component nitrogenase enzyme and nitrate reductase enzyme as well okay reductase enzyme so the correct match for d will be uh, number 2 okay so the correct answer will be option number b this is the correct match okay question number 43 is from the chapter principles of inheritance and variation and the question is which of the following statements are correct about line filter syndrome okay so let's start with the statements the first statement says that this disorder was first described by langdon down in 1866 so this is incorrect because this statement is suitable for down syndrome not line filter syndrome okay because langdon down described about the down syndrome first time okay but who described about the line filter syndrome so it was described by henry line filter okay so described by henry line filters in 1940s okay now let's move to the second statement it says that such an individual has overall masculine development however the feminine development is also expressed yes this is a correct statement okay now what is the reason of line filter syndrome so it is due to the presence of let's write it down here due to the presence of presence of an additional copy of additional copy of x chromosome okay so it results in resulting into a karyotype of 47 okay so instead of 46 chromosomes how many chromosomes such individuals have 47 chromosomes okay and x x y are the sex chromosomes here okay so because there is one extra x chromosome now let's move to the third statement it says that the affected individual is short stature this is incorrect this is about the down syndrome okay not line filter syndrome then the third uh, fourth one that is statement d says that physical psychomotor and mental development is retarded so this is also about the down syndrome okay not line filter syndrome then the last statement says that such individuals are sterile yes this is correct so only two statements out of five statements are correct okay b and b and e are correct only others are false so which one will be the correct answer option number b b and e only now question number 44 is from the chapter anatomy of flowering plants 
and here we have to identify the correct statements so let's start with the first statement it says that lenticels are the lens shaped openings permitting the exchange of gases yes it is a correct statement okay so these are lens shaped openings that permit the exchange of gases between the outer atmosphere and the internal tissue of the stem okay now let's move to the second statement statement b says that bark formed early in the season is called hard bark no this is incorrect the bark which are formed early in the season are known as soft bark okay early or soft bark soft bark and the one which are formed at the end of the season are known as late or hard bark okay now the third statement says that bark is a technical term that refers to all the tissues exterior to vascular cambium see this is a non technical term okay non technical non technical term not technical so this is also incorrect then statement d says that bark refers to periderm and secondary phloem yes this is a correct statement okay then the last statement says that phylogen is single layer in thickness this is incorrect because phylogen is a couple of layers thick couple of layers thick that means two layers not single so which ones are correct a and d are correct okay a and d only so option a will be the correct answer question number 45 is from the chapter cell the unit of life and the question is how many different proteins does the ribosome consist of options are 60 40 20 and 80 so this is a direct question we know that the ribosome consists of structural rnas and about 80 different proteins okay so option d will be the correct answer question number 46 is from the chapter biomolecules and the question is melonate inhibits the growth of pathogenic bacteria by inhibiting the activity of options are amylase lipase dinitrogenase and succinic dehydrogenase so the correct answer is succinic dehydrogenase because melonate is the competitive inhibitor of succinic dehydrogenase okay competitive inhibitor of succinic dehydrogenase and this melonate resembles in structure with the substrate succinate okay and we know that competitive inhibitors are often used in the control of bacterial pathogens so which one is the correct answer option number d question number 47 is from the chapter transport in plants and the question is match list 1 with list 2 okay so the first one mentioned in list 1 is cohesion so what is cohesion it represents mutual attraction between the water molecules so which one will be the correct match second one okay second one will be the correct match for a then comes adhesion so it represents the attraction of water molecules to polar surfaces okay so the correct match for this is the last one that is fourth one is the correct match for b okay towards polar surfaces then the third one is surface tension what does surface tension represents see we know that the water molecules are attracted to each other in the liquid phase more than that in the gaseous phase okay so in liquid phase they are attracted more as compared to that in gaseous phase so which one will be the correct match for this first one more attraction in liquid phase so first one is the correct match for c and the last one is gutation so the only match uh, the only thing left is the third one okay water loss in liquid phase third one will be the correct match for d okay so which one will be the correct answer the last option okay this is the correct match option d is the correct answer here question number 48 is from the chapter respiration in plants again we have to match list 1 with list 2 here so the first one is oxidative decarboxylation and the correct match for this will be pyruvate dehydrogenase let's see how so we know that pyruvate pyruvate that is formed by the glycolytic catabolism of carbohydrates in the cytosol after after entering mitochondrial matrix mitochondrial matrix undergoes 
oxidative decarboxylation okay oxidative decarboxylation by a complex set of reactions complex set of reactions catalyzed by which enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase okay catalyzed by pyruvate dehydrogenase so this is how pyruvate dehydrogenase is related to oxidative decarboxylation okay so the correct match for a is number 2 now we come to the second one that is glycolysis so which one will be the correct match it will be matched with emp pathway number 4 because i am writing here the scheme of glycolysis scheme of glycolysis was given by three scientists okay and what was what were the names of these scientists first one was gustav emden so we have to highlight the surname here okay this e e is highlighted then the next scientist is otto meyerhoff otto meyerhoff so m of meyerhoff will be highlighted and the third scientist was j parnas so the p of parnas is highlighted okay so this gives us emp okay therefore b will be matched with number 4 then the third one is oxidative phosphorylation and it will be matched with electron transport system okay because in electron transport system the energy of oxidation reduction is utilized for the production of proton gradient which is required for phosphorylation okay therefore this process is known as oxidative phosphorylation so the correct match for c is number 3 and the last one is tricarboxylic acid cycle or simply tca cycle and it is matched with citrate synthase because this cycle starts with the condensation of acetyl group right? let's write it down here tca cycle it starts with the condensation of acetyl group acetyl group with oxaloacetic acid and it uh, and water to yield the citric acid okay so this leads to the uh, citric acid okay citric acid and which enzyme will be involved here citrase synthase enzyme okay this reaction will be catalyzed by the enzyme citrase synthase therefore the match for d will be number 1 so which is the correct answer third one the match for a is 2 then the match for b is 4 match for c is 3 and then that for d is number 1 so option c is the correct answer question number 49 is from the chapter morphology of flowering plants and this is an assertion reason type of question so let's read the assertion it says that a flower is defined as modified shoot wherein the shoot apical meristem changes to floral meristem yes this is a correct statement because we know that a flower is nothing but the modified form of shoot only because the shoot apical meristem transforms into floral meristem in order to give rise to a flower okay now let's see what reason says it says that internode of the shoot gets condensed to produce different floral appendages laterally at successive node instead of the leaves okay so in general case there is development of leaves at the nodes okay so let's see how this reason explains the assertion okay so we have this shoot or the stem we have various nodes here okay at some distance and the distance between two successive nodes is known as internode that we know okay now in general case at these nodes there is development of leaves but in this case where the shoot apical meristem has to change into a floral meristem in that case what happens the internode does not elongate okay this internode does not elongate and therefore the axis gets condensed okay suppose this is the axis so it gets condensed here okay and then what happens there is 
development or the production of different kinds of floral appendages laterally at the successive nodes okay so at these nodes initially earlier there was development of leaves okay but now since there is requirement of flower so there will be development of floral appendages at the successive nodes okay instead of leaves so flowers will develop here like this got it so this is how the reason explains the assertion correctly so which one will be the correct answer option d both a and r are true and r is the correct explanation of a okay Question number 50 is from the chapter Biotechnology Principles and Processes and the question is main steps in the formation of recombinant DNA are given below. Arrange these steps in a correct sequence. So the first one is insertion of recombinant DNA into the host cell, then cutting of DNA at specific location by restriction enzyme, then isolation of desired DNA fragment and the last one is amplification of gene of interest using PCR. Okay. So first we need to cut the DNA at specific location by restriction endonuclease enzyme. Okay. So suppose this is the DNA and we need this part of the DNA. Okay. Then we have to cut it at this location using the enzyme restriction endonuclease. Okay. So first one will be the cutting that means B will be the first one. Then we'll isolate this part of the DNA. Okay. So isolation of the desired DNA fragment that is C will be the second one. Then amplification of gene of interest using PCR will amplify it using the polymerase chain reaction. Okay. Because earlier it was very small. Okay. Very minute. So D will come next and then we'll insert uh, the recombinant DNA into the host cell. Okay. So A will come last. So which will be the correct answer? Option number D. B, C, D, A will be the correct answer. Now let's start section A of zoology. So the first question of this section is from the chapter human reproduction and the question is which of the following statements are correct regarding female reproductive cycle. Okay. So the first statement says that in non primate mammals cyclical changes during reproduction are called estrous cycle. Yes, this is a correct statement. Okay. Then the next statement says that first menstrual cycle begins at puberty and is called menopause. Definitely it's not correct because the first menstrual cycle that begins at puberty is known as menarche. Okay, not menopause. So it is known as menarche. Then the third statement says that lack of menstruation may be indicative of pregnancy. Pregnancy, yes, this is correct. It is not confirmation of pregnancy, but it may be indicative of pregnancy. Okay, then the last statement says that cyclic menstruation extends between menarche and menopause yes this is correct statement so three of them are correct and only one is incorrect okay b is incorrect others are correct so a c and d are correct okay so option c will be the correct answer question number 52 is from the chapter reproductive health and this is an assertion reason type of question so according to the assertion Amniocentesis for sex determination is one of the strategies of reproductive and child healthcare program. Okay, so this is absolutely incorrect because amniocentesis is neither for sex determination nor it is one of the strategies of reproductive and child healthcare program. Okay, what is reproductive and child healthcare program? In short, it is written as RCH. So it is basically a program that deals with creating awareness among people about various reproduction related aspects and then providing facilities and support regarding that. Okay, but what is amniocentesis? Let's write it down here. Amniocentesis. It is used to used to test for the presence of for the presence of certain genetic disorders right certain genetic disorders such as down syndrome or hemophilia etc okay to determine so what is the main motive to determine the survivability of the fetus survivability of the fetus so the main motive of amniocentesis is the determination of 
the chromosomal or genetic disorders okay not sex determination but it can be misused for determination of sex and this can lead to female feticide okay therefore it is banned in india okay so the reason says that ban on amniocentesis checks increasing menace of female feticide so this is correct okay because it can be misused so assertion is false but reason is true so option c that a is false but r is true will be the correct answer question number 53 is from the chapter organisms and population here we have to match list 1 and with list 2 list 1 has interacting species and list 2 has name of the interaction okay so let's start with the first one first one is that a leopard and lion in a forest or grassland so we know that a leopard and lion both are carnivores and their food is also same okay almost same so which one will be the correct match for this first one competition okay this is an example of competition because both the species are competing for the same resources okay so the match for a will be number one so it is already matched here then come to the second one a cuckoo laying egg in crow's nest so this is also matched here okay this is an example of brood parasitism where cuckoo is cuckoo is the parasitic bird and crow is the host bird okay it is the host bird so which one is benefited cuckoo is benefited because it reduces the burden on cuckoo okay because it lay it lays its eggs in crow's nest okay so all the work has to be done by the crow okay so the crow is benefited because it has to take care of the egg that is not its own okay now the match for b will be number two now let's come to the third one fungi and root of higher plants in mycorrhizae so this is mutualism again this is correctly matched here right why because uh, both the species are benefited here okay the fungi help the plant in the absorption of essential nutrients from the soil while the plant in turn provides the fungi with energy yielding carbohydrates so let's write it down here fungi helps in absorption of absorption of essential nutrients from the soil nutrients from the soil and plants help in providing the providing food to the fungi okay providing food that is carbohydrate using this the fungi takes the energy okay then which will be the match for c it will be number three that means all are correctly matched here already then the last one is a cattle egret and a cattle in a field so here one is benefited and the other is unaffected okay neither benefited nor harmed so this is an example of commensalism what happens see uh, the egrets always forage close to where the cattle are grazing because when the cattle move they stir up and flush out the insects from the vegetation okay so these cattle they flush out insects which have to be eaten by the cattle egret so if this would not happen then it would be very difficult for the egret to find these insects okay so this way cattle is helping the egret to find its food okay so egret is benefited here but the cattle is unaffected so this is an example of commensalism so the match for d will be number four so which one will be the correct answer here last option a1 b2 c3 d4 okay option d will be the correct answer question number 54 is from the chapter breathing and exchange of gases and the question is vital capacity of the lung is okay so what is vital capacity it is the maximum volume of air let's write it down here the maximum volume of air a person can breathe in can breathe in after forced expiration okay after forced expiration and it includes irv then erv and tv that means inspiratory reserve volume plus expiratory reserve volume and then tidal volume okay 
So which option will be the correct one? Option number C will be the correct answer. Question number 55 is from the chapter Reproductive Health. And the question is which one of the following common sexually transmitted diseases is completely curable when detected early and treated properly? Options are gonorrhea, hepatitis B, HIV infection and genital herpes. Okay, so the first one that is gonorrhea is a bacterial disease, right? Bacterial disease. Whereas all the other are viral diseases. Okay. All the other are viral diseases. Now we know that most of the sexually transmitted infections or diseases are completely curable when detected early and treated properly, but except hepatitis B, HIV infection, and genital herpes. Okay, so these three are not curable. But other than these three, most of the sexually transmitted diseases are completely curable. So gonorrhea is also curable. Okay, therefore option A will be the correct answer. Question number 56 is from the chapter chemical coordination and integration. Here we have to match list 1 with list 2. Okay, so the first thing mentioned in list 1 is CCK that is cholecystokinin. Okay, the full form is cholecystokinin. Now we know that it acts on, acts on gallbladder, gallbladder as well as pancreas. In gallbladder, it stimulates the secretion of bile juice, right? It stimulates the secretion of bile juice. And what does it do in pancreas? It helps in the secretion of pancreatic enzyme. Okay, pancreatic enzyme. But in list 2, we have only pancreas mentioned, not gallbladder. So CCK will be matched with pancreas. Okay, so the correct match for A will be number 4. Then the second one is GIP. What is the full form of GIP? It is gastric inhibitory polypeptide. So it is obvious that it will be matched with gastric gland. Okay, G for gastric. So it's gastric inhibitory polypeptide. What does it do? It inhibits, inhibits gastric secretion, gastric secretion and motility. So the correct match for B will be number 3. Then number C is ANF. The full form is arterial natriuretic factor. Okay. So it will be matched with heart. Why? Because it is released. It is released from the arterial wall of our heart. Okay. Arterial wall of our heart. So the correct match for C will be number 2. Okay. And the last one is ADH. ADH means antidiuretic factor. So where does it act? It acts mainly on kidney. Okay. So acts on mainly on kidney. And stimulates. Stimulates. Resorption. Of water and electrolytes by the distal tubules, right? By the distal tubules. So, which will be the correct match for D? Number one. So, according to this, the correct answer will be option number D. Question number 57 is from the chapter Human Health and Disease. Here also we have to match list 1 with list 2. So first disease that is mentioned in list 1 is ringworm. So how is ringworm caused? It is caused by trichophyton. Okay. So the correct match for A will be number 2. Trichophyton. Okay. Then the next one is filariasis. And it is caused by which area? Bancrofty. Okay. Number 3. The correct match for B will be number 3. C is malaria. So this is very common. We know that malaria is caused by plasmodium species. Okay. And specifically plasmodium vivex. So the correct match for C will be number 4. And the last one is pneumonia. So pneumonia is a, a pneumonia is caused by hemophilus influenzae. Okay. 
so the correct match for d will be number 1 so the correct answer will be option number d okay question number 58 is from the chapter body fluids and circulation here also we have to match list 1 with list 2 so the first one is p wave now what does it represent in a standard ecg so it represents the electrical excitation of the atria okay electrical excitation that is also known as depolarization depolarization of atria and it leads to the contraction of both the atria okay so it leads to contraction of both the atria so what will be the correct match for a it will be number 3 depolarization of atria okay so the match for a is number 3 now let's come to the second one q wave see the p wave was related to the contraction of atria whereas q wave is related to the ventricles okay contraction of ventricle so it represents the beginning of the systole beginning of the systole and systole is nothing but the ventricular contraction therefore the correct match for b will be number 1 beginning of systole then c is qrs complex qrs complex now this complex represents the depolarization of the ventricles which initiates the ventricular contraction okay so it represents the depolarization polarization of the ventricles so the correct match for c will be number 4 depolarization of ventricles okay and the last one is t wave this t wave represents the return of the ventricles okay the return of the ventricles from the from the excited to normal state okay excited to normal state and this return of the ventricles from excited to normal state that is relaxation is known as repolarization okay repolarization so the correct match for d will be number 2 repolarization of ventricles okay so according to this which will be the correct answer option number d will be the correct answer question number 59 is from the chapter human health and disease and the question is in which blood corpuscles the hiv undergoes replication and produces progeny viruses options are b lymphocytes basophils eosinophils and th cells so we know that the hiv enters the helper t lymphocyte cells right that is th cells that this is helper helper t lymphocyte cells so here it replicates and produces the progeny viruses okay then the progeny viruses are released into the blood to attack other helper t lymphocytes okay so option d will be the correct answer question number 60 is from the chapter biomolecules and here we are given two statements we have to find out the correct statements okay so the first statement says that low temperature preserves the enzyme in a temporarily inactive state whereas high temperature destroys the enzymatic activity because proteins are denatured by heat so this is absolutely correct and this sentence is simple and self explanatory okay so let's move to second statement now it says that when the inhibitor closely resembles the substrate in its molecular structure and inhibits the activity of the enzyme it is known as competitive inhibitor so this is also correct what happens in competitive inhibition in this case there is a structural similarity between the substrate and the inhibitor molecules okay so let's say this is the substrate molecule and this is the inhibitor molecule so you can see that these are similar substrate and inhibitor 
so in this way the inhibitor competes with the substrate for the substrate binding site of the enzyme okay so these are the substrate binding sites so suppose this is your enzyme so it has to fit in the substrate but due to the competitive inhibition it will bind with the inhibitor okay like this so this happens in case of competitive inhibition so both the statements are correct right so option d will be the correct answer both statement 1 and statement 2 are true question number 61 is from the chapter structural organization in animals and this is again a statement based question so let's read the statements first statement says that ligaments are dense irregular tissue so this is incorrect because ligaments are examples of dense regular tissue okay dense regular tissue not irregular tissue okay then let's read the next statement it says that cartilage is a dense regular tissue no this is not dense regular tissue it instead it is an example of specialized connective tissue okay this is an example of specialized connective tissue so both the statements are false that means option a will be the correct answer question number 62 is from the chapter sell the unit of life and the question is which of the following are not considered as the part of endomembrane system okay so we know that endomembrane system includes endoplasmic reticulum then golgi complex golgi complex lysosomes and vacuoles because the functions of these organelles are coordinated okay whereas the functions of mitochondria then chloroplast and peroxisomes are not coordinated with these components okay so these will be uh, these will uh, these are not the part of endomembrane system okay so a c and e only that is option a will be the correct answer here okay these are not considered as the part of endomembrane system question number 63 is from the chapter biomolecules and this is also a statement based question so the first statement says that a protein is imagined as a line yes the left end represents the first amino acid this is also correct but here it is given c terminal which is incorrect and the right end represented by last amino acid end terminal see only the terminals are mentioned wrongly okay so although the protein is imagined as a line this is protein and the left end represents the first amino acid this is your first amino acid whereas the right end represents the last amino acid so this is correct but the first amino acid is known as n terminal and the last amino acid is known as c terminal okay so this is mentioned incorrectly therefore statement 1 is false now let's read the second statement it says that adult human hemoglobin consists of four subunits yes two subunits of alpha type and two subunits of beta type so this is correct okay so statement 1 is false but statement 2 is true that means option c will be the correct answer question number 64 is from the chapter principles of inheritance and variation and the question is broad palm with single palm crease is visible in a person suffering from options are turner syndrome linefelter syndrome thalassemia and down syndrome so which is the correct answer option number d down syndrome okay and what is the reason of down syndrome it is caused by let's write it down here caused by an additional copy an additional copy of which chromosome chromosome number 21 okay chromosome number 21 and what are the symptoms list let's list down the symptoms here so symptoms are broad palm broad palm with characteristic palm crease characteristic palm crease 
this one is mentioned in the question right then the second symptom can be short stature short statured with small round head okay with a small round head then furrowed tongue furrowed tongue and partially open mouth okay and partially open mouth so these are the most common symptoms there are other symptoms as well so i'm writing etc here okay so option d will be the correct answer question number 65 is from the chapter environmental issues and the question is which of the following statements is correct okay so we have to find out the correct statements let's read the statements the first one says that biomagnification refers to increase in concentration of the toxicant at successive trophic levels yes this is a correct statement and we have already discussed this statement in one of the previous questions okay now let's move to the second statement it says presence of large amount of nutrients in water restricts algal bloom this is incorrect does it restrict no it promotes the growth of algal bloom okay promotes the growth of algal bloom this also we have discussed right algal bloom and we know that algal bloom causes fish mortality then let's move to the third statement it says algal bloom decreases fish mortality so i already told you that it leads to the fish mortality okay that means it increases fish mortality not decreases then the last statement says that eutrophication refers to increase in domestic sewage and waste water in lakes this is also incorrect so what is eutrophication this is this refers to the natural aging of natural aging of a lake and what is the reason the reason is nutrient enrichment okay of a lake by nutrient enrichment of its water so we can see that only the first statement is correct others are false okay so option a will be the correct answer question number 66 is from the chapter structural organization in animals and this is also match the list type of question okay so let's see the first one in list one is tenia tenia now tenia belongs to platyhelminthes right platyhelminthes and we know that platyhelminthes have protonephridia or the flame cells as the excretory organs okay so they have proto nephridia or flame cells but in list 2 flame cells are mentioned so the correct match for a will be number 3 right now let's move to the second one it is paramecium paramecium now we know that paramecium is a single celled organism right single celled organism so we know that single celled organisms like paramecium have contractile vacuoles for excretion okay they have contractile vacuole so the correct match for b will be number 2 that means this is already correctly matched here okay then c is periplaneta peri planeta what is peri planeta this is the scientific name of cockroach okay so here we are talking about the cockroach and cockroach have uricose gland they have uricose gland for the storage of uric acid okay so the correct match for c will be number 4 and the last one is peritema pere tema and peritema means we are talking about the earthworm here okay earthworm an earthworm belongs to annelida annelida and what is the excretory organ of annelids it is a tubular structure known as nephridia okay so they have nephridia 
as the uh, excretory organ okay other annelids also have nephridia okay so the correct match for d will be number 1 so what is the correct answer option number b okay option number b is the correct answer here question number 67 is from the chapter environmental issues so again a statement based question let's read the statement 1 It says that electrostatic precipitate is most widely used in thermal power plant. Yes, this is a correct statement. Then the second statement says that electrostatic precipitate in thermal power plant removes ionizing radiations. No, it does not remove ionizing radiation. So what does it remove? It removes the particulate matter present in the exhaust. Okay. So it let's write it down here. It removes about 99% particulate matter matter present in the present in the exhaust from a thermal power plant thermal power plant so it removes the particulate matter not the ionizing radiations so first statement is correct but the second one is incorrect okay so option b statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect will be the correct answer question number 68 is from the chapter human reproduction here two statements are given let's see the statements the first statement says that vas deferens receives a duct from seminal vesicle yes and opens into urethra as the ejaculatory duct so this is a correct statement okay then the next statement says that the cavity of the cervix is called cervical canal which along with vagina forms birth canal so we know that cervical canal cervical canal plus vagina together work as the birth canal right so this is also correct that means both the statements are true so option d both statement 1 and statement 2 are true will be the correct answer question number 69 is from the chapter animal kingdom and the question is radial symmetry is not found in the adults of phylum okay so which phylum options are hemichordata coelenterata echinodermata and tenophora so the correct answer will be hemichordata because we know that hemichordates are bilaterally symmetrical animals right they are bilaterally symmetrical animals whereas all the other that is cilentrata echinodermata see specifically adult echinodermata okay and tenophora these are radial in symmetry okay these have radial symmetry so the correct answer will be option number a question number 70 is from the chapter digestion and absorption here we have to match list 1 with list 2 okay so the cells that are mentioned in list 1 is peptic cells okay the first type of cells mentioned here are peptic cells now we know that the peptic cells or the chief cells secrete proenzyme pepsinogen okay proenzyme pepsinogen so the correct match for a will be number 3 okay then we come to the second one that is goblet cells goblet cells now these cells are found in the mucosal epithelium okay found in mucosal epithelium so as it is clear from the name it secretes mucus that helps in lubrication okay so it secretes mucus that helps in lubrication so the correct match for b will be number 1 then the third one is auxentic cells which are also known as parietal cell okay so auxentic cells or the parietal cell 
they secrete secrete hcl and intrinsic factor intrinsic factor for absorption of vitamin b12 absorption of vitamin b12 so the correct match for c will be number 4 and the last one is hepatic cells so where are hepatic cells found these are found in liver okay in the hepatic lobules and these secrete the bile juice bile juice so the correct match for d will be number 2 so according to this the correct answer is option number b question number 71 is from the chapter neural control and coordination here also we have to match list 1 with list 2 with respect to human eye okay so the first one is fovea now what is fovea it is the point of greatest visual acuity or resolution therefore the correct match for a will be number 3 point of greatest visual acuity or resolution okay third one will be the correct match for this then the next one is iris so iris is the visible colored portion of the eye okay someone has blue iris someone has black someone has brown and so on okay so this is the visible colored portion of the eye that regulates the diameter of pupil okay so the correct match for b will be number 1 it regulates the diameter of the pupil then the third one is blind spot now blind spot is the point where optic nerve leaves the eyeball and photoreceptor cells are absent okay so fourth one will be the correct match for c okay point where optic nerve leaves the eyeball and photoreceptors are absent then the last one is sclera sclera it is the external layer of the eye that is formed of dense connective tissue okay so the second one will be the correct match for d okay so a3 b1 c4 and d2 which is the correct answer option number d is the correct answer question number 72 is from the chapter sell the unit of life and the question is which of the following functions is carried out by cytoskeleton in a cell okay options are protein synthesis motility transportation and nuclear division so what is a cytoskeleton let's explain it okay so it is an elaborate network and elaborate network of filamentous filamentous proteinaceous structures that means made up of protein okay so proteinaceous structures consisting of consisting of microtubules micro tubules then micro filaments and intermediate filaments okay intermediate filaments present in cytoplasm okay present in cytoplasm right so these are collectively referred to as cytoskeleton which ones microtubules microfilaments and intermediate filaments and these are present in the cytoplasm of the cell and what are the functions of cytoskeleton functions include mechanical support mechanical support motility and maintenance of shape of the cell okay maintenance of the shape of the cell but out of the given options only one is correct that is motility option b will be the correct answer question number 73 is from the chapter digestion and absorption and the question is once the undigested and unabsorbed substances entered the cecum their back flow is prevented by options are ileocecal valve gastroesophageal sphincter pyloric sphincter and sphincter of odi so the correct answer is option a that is ileocecal valve okay so this prevents the back flow of fecal matter okay it is the part of large intestine right so this is the correct answer now let's discuss other options as well 
second one is gastroesophageal sphincter so this is a sphincter that regulates the opening of let's write it down here it regulates it is a muscular sphincter right and it regulates the opening of esophagus esophagus or the food pipe into the stomach into the stomach then the next is pyloric sphincter so this sphincter regulates regulates the opening the opening between stomach and the next part that is duodenum of small intestine okay stomach and duodenum duodenum is part of small intestine then the last one is sphincter of audi so this guards the opening of it guards the opening of common hepato pancreatic duct okay hepato pancreatic duct so according to the question which one is the correct answer option number a ileocecal valve okay question number 74 is from the chapter reproductive health here also we have to match list 1 with list 2 so the first one mentioned in list 1 is vasectomy so what is vas vasectomy it is a surgical method of contraception in which the vas deferens is cut and tied okay so this is a surgical method so third one is the correct match for a okay in this vas deferens is deferens is cut and tied then the next one is coitus interruptus so this is a natural method of contraception okay so fourth one is the correct match for b natural method then the third one is cervical caps so what kind of barrier is this uh, what kind of contraception is this this is a barrier method okay so the correct match for c will be number 2 then the next is sahel so we know that it is an oral method of contraception okay pills are taken so option the first one will be the correct match for d so a3 then b4 that means option a will be the correct answer okay c2 and d1 question number 75 is from the chapter locomotion and movement and here we have to match the type of joints with the location where they are found okay so the first type of joint is cartilaginous joint where is it found it is found between the adjacent vertebra and vertebral column okay so the correct match for a will be 2 then the next one is ball and socket joint and it is found between humerus and pectoral girdle so the correct match for b will be number 4 then the next is fibrous joint where is it found it is found in the skull right so it is found between the flat skull bones that means the correct match for c will be number 1 and the last one is saddle joint we know that this is found in our thumb okay so the correct match will be between carpal and metacarpal of thumb that means third one will be the correct match for d so according to this the correct answer is option number a a2 b4 C1 and D3. Question number 76 is from the chapter Molecular Basis of Inheritance. Here two statements are given, so let's read the statements. First statement says that RNA mutates at a faster rate. Yes, because RNA is an unstable molecule. Okay, it is an unstable molecule as compared to DNA. So it mutates at a faster rate. then the second statement says that viruses having rna genome and shorter life span mutate and evolve faster yes this is also correct and this in fact is the consequence of the first statement okay so why viruses having rna genome and shorter life span mutate and evolve faster because the reason is that rna mutates at a faster rate okay so both these statements are true so option d will be the correct answer both statement 1 and statement 2 are true Now question number 77 is again from the chapter molecular basis of inheritance here also statements are given so let's read the statements first statement says that 
in prokaryotes the positively charged dna is held with some negatively charged proteins in a region called nucleoid so this is an incorrect statement because we know that dna molecules are negatively charged okay so these are negatively charged dna held with some positively charged protein okay positively charged proteins in a region called nucleoid okay so this is incorrect then the second statement says that in eukaryotes the negatively charged dna is wrapped around the positively charged histone octamer to form nucleosome okay like this this is the protein so like this the negatively charged dna is wrapped around this okay this is your nucleosome so the first one is incorrect but the second one is correct okay so option number c statement 1 is incorrect but statement 2 is true will be the correct answer question number 78 is from the chapter principles of inheritance and variation and the question is which one of the following symbols represents mating between relatives in human pedigree analysis okay so that means the male and female both are relatives of each other okay so this is represented by a double line between the male and female okay that means option a this symbol is the uh, representation of mating between relatives okay so option a will be the correct answer question number 79 is from the chapter evolution and the question is select the correct group or set of australian marsupials exhibiting adaptive radiation so what are marsupials these are the animals that raise the newborn outside the mother's body okay so here in case of marsupials newborn are raised outside the mother's body in an external pouch okay external pouch at the underside of the body underside of the body now let's see the options first one is numbat spotted cuscus and flying phalanger so yes this is a correct group of australian marsupials that exhibit adaptive radiation so option a itself is the correct one but let's go through other options as well in the second option we have mole which is a placental mammal then flying squirrel is also a placental mammal okay these two are placental mammals and unlike the marsupials the development of embryo takes place inside the mother's body okay in case of placental mammals and the nourishment is done by the organ known as placenta okay so the overall development in case of placental mammals is inside the body and in case of marsupial it is outside the body okay so it cannot be the correct answer then in the third option we have lemur and theater and wolf so lemur and wolf are also placental mammals and in the last option bobcat is the placental mammal so the only correct answer is option number a question number 80 is from the chapter biotechnology principles and processes and the question is which of the following is not a cloning vector options are yac then pbr322 then probe and then bac so which is the correct answer option number c probe because it is not a cloning vector so what is a probe it is a let's write it down here it is a single stranded single stranded dna or rna dna or rna that is tagged with a radioactive molecule okay tagged with a radioactive radioactive molecule is known as probe and it helps in the detection of mutated genes okay so it helps in what is the function of probe it helps in the detection of detection of mutated gene therefore it is not a cloning vector whereas others mentioned in, in this question are the cloning vectors okay so option c will be the correct answer question number 81 is from the chapter human health and disease here we have to match list 1 with list 2 okay so the first thing mentioned in list 1 is heroin 
so to which category it belongs it belongs to the category of opioids okay opioids and it is a depressant that slows down the body functions okay it is a depressant that slows down the body functions so the correct match for a will be number 2 slow down the body function okay then we have marijuana marijuana and it is known for its effect on the cardiovascular system of the body okay so it is known for effect on cardiovascular system cardio vascular system of the body so the correct match for b will be number 1 okay then the third one c is cocaine cocaine now cocaine interferes with transport of neurotransmitter dopamine okay interferes with transport of dopamine okay and dopamine is a neurotransmitter neurotransmitter dopamine so the correct match for c will be number 4 and the last one is morphine so morphine or morphine it is used as a sedative or sedative pain killer okay so the correct match for d will be number 3 so according to this the correct answer will be option number d question number 82 is from the chapter biotechnology and its applications and the question is which one of the following techniques does not serve the purpose of early diagnosis of a disease for its early treatment options are serum and urine analysis polymerase chain reaction technique enzyme linked immunosorbent assay and recombinant dna technology so we know that serum and urine analysis is a conventional method right it is a conventional method not a latest technique so this does not help in the early diagnosis of disease whereas other three methods use latest techniques and they serve the purpose of early diagnosis okay so option a will be the correct answer question number 83 is from the chapter human reproduction and this is an assertion reason based question so let's read the assertion it says that endometrium is necessary for implantation of blastocyst so what is implantation implantation this is the embedding embedding of blastocyst in the endometrium in the endometrium of the uterus okay so obviously endometrium is important okay it is necessary so assertion is a correct statement okay then let's read the reason it says that in the absence of fertilization the corpus luteum degenerates that causes disintegration of endometrium so we know that the corpus luteum secretes a large amount of progesterone right secretes large amount of progesterone which is essential for the maintenance of endometrium and this progesterone hormone is essential for the maintenance of maintenance of endometrium now what happens in the absence of fertilization let's write it down here when there is an absence of fertilization fertilization then the corpus luteum degenerates okay corpus luteum degenerates now we know that the corpus luteum secretes progesterone so when the corpus luteum degenerates there is decrease in the progesterone okay decrease in the level of the level 
of progesterone and this progesterone was essential for the maintenance of endometrium so when the level of progesterone decreases it will cause disintegration of the endometrium okay disintegration of endometrium leading to leading to menstruation so both the statements assertion as well as reason are individually correct but the reason does not explain the assertion okay because this disintegration of the endometrium has nothing to do with the implantation process that is mentioned in the assertion okay so these are individually true but the reason does not explain the assertion so which one will be the correct answer option number a both a and r are true but r is not the correct explanation of it okay option a will be the correct answer question number 84 is from the chapter molecular basis of inheritance and here we have to match list 1 with list 2 okay so in list 1 we have gene a gene y gene i gene z that means this question is with respect to lac operon okay we are talking we are talking about the lac operon so in a lac operon gene a codes for the enzyme transacetylase okay so the correct match for a will be number 2 then the second one gene y it codes for the enzyme permease so the correct match for b will be number 3 then the third one is gene i what does gene i do it codes for repressor protein okay so the correct match for c will be number 4 and the last one is gene z which codes for the enzyme beta galactosidase okay so the correct match for d will be number 1 so this is the correct match therefore which answer will be the correct one option number a a2 b3 c4 and d1 okay question number 85 is from the chapter excretory products and their elimination and the question is given below are two statements one is labeled as assertion a and the other is labeled as reason r so let's read the assertion it says that nephrons are of two types cortical and juxta medullary nephrons based on their relative position in the cortex and medulla okay so the part of nephron that is present in the cortex is known as cortical nephron and the one which is present in medulla is known as juxta medullary okay so this is a correct statement then the reason says that juxta medullary nephrons have short loop of henle whereas cortical nephrons have longer loop of henle this is absolutely wrong because in the medulla the loop of henle is very long okay so the juxta medullary nephrons are very long whereas in cortical nephrons the loop of henle is short okay so this statement is just the opposite okay so a is true but r is false that means option number b will be the correct answer Question number eighty-six is from the chapter structural organization in animals, and the question is which of the following is characteristic feature of cockroach regarding sexual dimorphism? That means in males and females there is variation. Okay, variation in male and female. So the first one is presence of anal styles. Yes, this will be the correct answer because these anal styles are present in male cockroaches okay these are present in male cockroaches whereas absent in females okay absent in female cockroaches so it exhibits the sexual dimorphism whereas other things mentioned in the options sclerites anal sulci and dark brown body color these things are all common okay these things are common between males and females okay male and female cockroaches so the correct answer is option number a Question number eighty-seven is from the chapter cell cycle and cell division, and here we have to select the correct statements. Okay, 
so let's see the first statement is that tetrad formation is seen during leptotene stage so is it true no because tetrad formation is seen during zygotene stage okay zygotene not leptotene now let's move to the second statement it says during anaphase the centromere split and chromatids separate yes this is a correct statement then the third statement says that terminalization takes place during pachytene is it true no because terminalization of chiasmata takes place during the diakinesis okay diakinesis so this is also incorrect statement the fourth statement says nucleolus golgi complex and endoplasmic reticulum are reformed during telophase stage that is the last stage yes this is also correct statement then the last statement says that crossing over takes place between sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes no it takes place between non sister chromatids okay non sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes so this is also incorrect which ones are correct statements b and d are correct right so b and d only option a will be the correct answer question number 88 is from the chapter excretory products and their elimination and the question is which of the following statements are correct so let's check the first statement says that an excessive loss of body fluid from the body switches off osmoreceptors so this is incorrect because it activates the osmoreceptors right an excessive loss of body fluid from the body activates or switches on the osmoreceptors to stimulate the hypothalamus to stimulate the hypothalamus to release a hormone which hormone anti diuretic hormone okay to release anti diuretic that is adh hormone right and this adh will facilitate water reabsorption that is mentioned in the second statement so in the second statement it says that adh facilitates water reabsorption to prevent diuresis yes it is correct statement the first one was incorrect but the second statement is correct then the third statement says anf causes vasodilation okay so anf causes dilation of the blood vessels okay dilation of the blood vessels that is known as vasodilation now due to the dilation of the blood vessel the blood pressure will decrease okay so it leads to decrease in blood pressure whereas the adh hormone it is just opposite to anf okay it causes constriction of the blood vessels constriction of blood vessel so due to this the blood pressure will increase okay increase in blood pressure so anf causes decrease in blood pressure whereas adh causes increase in blood pressure got it so let's see the statement the third statement was anf causes vasodilation yes correct and due to this the blood pressure will decrease and the fourth statement says that the adh causes increase in blood pressure because it causes constriction of the blood vessel so this is also correct then the last statement says that adh is responsible for decrease in glomerular filtration rate this is incorrect why because we have seen that adh causes increase in increase in blood pressure right so when blood pressure will increase the glomerular blood flow will also increase okay so it will also cause increase in glomerular blood flow that is it will increase the glomerular filtration rate not decrease therefore this is a wrong statement okay so first and last statements are incorrect whereas all the others are correct okay so b c and d only are correct okay so option a will be the correct answer question number 89 is from the chapter cell cycle and cell division and the question is given below are two statements so let's read the statements statement 1 says that during g0 phase of the cell cycle the cell is metabolically inactive no this is incorrect because the cell remains metabolically active but it does not proliferate okay so let's write it down here during g0 phase during g0 phase of the cell cycle the cells remain metabolically active but 
does not or the cells do not proliferate unless called on to do so called on to do so that means unless they get the signal to proliferate they will not okay and it depends on the requirement of the organism so depending on the requirement of requirement of the organism so this way the first statement is incorrect now let's read the second statement it says that the centrosome undergoes duplication during s phase of interphase so this is correct okay see we know that during s phase the dna replication takes place okay during s phase dna replication takes place and this takes place in the nucleus okay which part of the cell nucleus but at the same time there is duplication of centrosome in another part of the cell that is cytoplasm so this is a correct statement so option c will be the correct answer statement 1 is incorrect but statement 2 is correct question number 90 is from the chapter strategies for enhancement in food production and the question is which one of the following is not an advantage of inbreeding so let's check the first one is that it exposes harmful recessive genes that are eliminated by selection okay that are eliminated by selection so this is an advantage of inbreeding then the next one is elimination of less desirable genes and accumulation of superior gene takes place due to it okay so this is also correct then the third one is it decreases the productivity of inbred population after continuous inbreeding so this does not seem to be an advantage right it seems to be a disadvantage so this will not be an advantage of inbreeding okay then the last one is it decreases homozygosity this statement is incorrect okay because it would be that it increases homozygosity increases homozygosity but the third one will be the correct answer because it is clearly not the advantage it is the disadvantage okay so option c is the answer here question number 91 is from the chapter organisms and population here we have to match list 1 with list 2 so in list 1 the first thing we have is logistic growth so when does logistic growth takes place it occurs when there is a limited resource availability okay so the correct match for a will be second number limited resource availability condition so the match for a will be number 2 then comes the exponential growth so exponential growth means the resource is unlimited okay so unlimited resource availability condition that means number 1 will be the correct match for b okay then c c is expanding age pyramid the pyramid is expanding that means the population is increasing okay so it reflects that the percent individuals of pre productive pre reproductive age is largest followed by reproductive and post reproductive age groups okay so pre reproductive largest and then reproductive group and then post reproductive group okay so in this condition the age pyramid will be expanding so the correct match for c is number 3 and the last one is stable age pyramid so when does stable age pyramid is formed when the population is stable okay that means the percent individual of pre reproductive and reproductive age are same okay so the last option that is the uh, the last one the percent individuals of pre reproductive and reproductive age groups are same that means the next group that is that will become reproductive will be same in population okay so which one will be the correct match for d it will be number 4 so the correct answer is the last one option number d is the correct answer question number 92 is from the chapter chemical coordination and integration and the question is which of the following are not under the control of thyroid hormone so the first one is that maintenance of water and electrolyte balance yes it is under the control of thyroid hormone then the next one is regulation of basal metabolic rate so it is also one of the roles of thyroid hormone then the next one is normal rhythm of sleep wake cycle this is not the role of thyroid hormone so 
which hormone is responsible for normal rhythm of sleep wake cycle melatonin hormone okay melatonin hormone melatonin that is secreted by secreted by the pineal gland pineal gland then the next one is development of immune system this is also not under the control of thyroid hormone so again which hormone is responsible for this a hormone known as thymosin thymosin that is secreted by the thymus okay then the next one is support the process of rbc formation yes this is under the control of thyroid hormone so c and d are not under the control of thyroid hormone right so that we have to find out right not under the control of thyroid hormone that means c and d only so option b will be the correct answer question number 93 is from the chapter animal kingdom and the question is the unique mammalian characteristics are so let's see the first option is hair spina and mammary gland yes all these are unique characteristics of mammals then the next one is hair spina and indirect development see indirect development is not seen in mammals so this cannot be the correct answer then the next one is pina monocondylic skull and mammary gland so mammary gland and pina are correct but monocondylic skull is not found in mammals so let's see monocondylic skull is found in reptiles and aves reptiles and aves and what kind of skull is found in humans uh, in mammals it is dicondylic okay dicondylic skull is found in mammals then the last one is hair tympanic membrane and mammary gland so tympanic membrane is found in mammals but it is not a unique characteristic because it is also found in amphibians okay also in amphibians so it cannot be the unique characteristics so the only correct answer is option number a question number 94 is from the chapter locomotion and movement and the question is which of the following statements are correct regarding skeletal muscle so the first statement says that muscle bundles are held together by collagenous connective tissue layer called fascicle no it's not called fascicle what is it called it is called fascia okay fascia fascicles are the muscle fibers itself okay but the connective tissue layer is fascia so this is an incorrect statement then the second statement is sarcoplasmic reticulum of muscle fiber is a storehouse of calcium ion yes this is a correct statement okay then the third statement says striated appearance of skeletal muscle fiber is due to the distribution pattern of actin and myosin proteins yes the arrangement of actin and myosin proteins give the appearance of striation okay so this is also correct statement then the last one says that m line is considered as functional unit of contraction called sarcomere so it is not the m line that is the functional unit so this is incorrect so what is the functional unit of contraction it is the portion of myofibril let's write it down here portion of myofibril between two successive two successive z lines successive z lines is considered as the functional the functional unit of contraction not the m line okay and this is called sarcomere so m line is incorrect right so the last statement is also incorrect that means only statement b and c are correct b and c only option a will be the correct answer question number 95 is from the chapter body fluids and circulation and the question is which of the following statements are correct so let's check the statements first statement is basophils are the most abundant cells of the total white blood cells this is incorrect so what are the most abundant cells neutrophils okay neutrophils 
are the most abundant most abundant cells and they constitute 60 to 65 percent of the total WBCs. Okay. Whereas if we talk about the basophils, these are least abundant. Okay. Least abundant. Only about 0.5 to 1 percent of WBCs. Okay. Then the next statement is basophils secrete histamine, serotonin, and heparin. Yes, this is a correct statement. Then the third statement is basophils are involved in inflammatory response. Yes, so these hist histamine, serotonin, and heparin these are involved in inflammatory response. Therefore, basophil is also involved in this. So statement B and C both are correct. Then the fourth statement, statement D is basophils have kidney-shaped nucleus. This is not correct. So which are the cells which have kidney-shaped nucleus? These are monocytes. Okay, monocytes have kidney shaped nucleus then the last statement is basophils are a granulocytes this is also incorrect because basophils are granulocytes okay these are granulocytes then which will be the correct answer c statement b and c are correct only right so b and c only that means option b is the correct answer Question number 96 is from the chapter Molecular Basis of Inheritance and the question is which one of the following is the sequence on corresponding coding strand if the sequence on mRNA formed is as follows. So this is the sequence on mRNA. Now we know that the coding strand of the DNA coding strand of the DNA will undergo transcription to give the mRNA right. Now what will be the difference between the coding strand of DNA and the mRNA. So the difference will be that the coding strand will consist of thymine that is represented by the letter T whereas mRNA will consist of uracil at the place where thymine was present okay that is represented by the letter U. So mRNA does not consist of thymine instead it consists of uracil at the same place okay and everything else will be same. So if we look at this sequence that is given in the question First, we have a 5 dash here. So that will remain as it is. Okay. And this side also 3 dash will remain as it is. So in two options, we have such arrangement. 5 dash is uh, given at first in option number B and D. So these two, either of these two will be the correct answer. Now let's see. Here we have uracil in the sequence that is mentioned in the question. So this is the mRNA. Therefore, we have uracil. But in the coding strand, we will have thymine at the place where uracil is present. Okay. So the coding strand should consist of thymine, not uracil. So in option number B, we have thymine. You can see thymine at the location where uracil is present in the mRNA. Whereas in option D, we have uracil only. So this is again mRNA. So this cannot be the correct answer. So the coding strand of DNA is option number B. This is the correct sequence on coding strand. Question number 97 is from the chapter Neural Control and Coordination and the question is the parts of human brain that helps in regulation of sexual behavior, expression of excitement, pleasure, rage, fear etc are option A corpora quadrigemina and hippocampus, option B brain stem and epithalamus, option C corpus callosum and thalamus and option D limbic system and hypothalamus. So the correct answer will be option D. So limbic system along with hypothalamus is responsible for the regulation of sexual behavior, then expression of excitement, pleasure, rage, fear, etc. Okay. Therefore, option D will be the correct answer. Question number 98 is from the chapter structural organization in animals. And the question is match list 1 with list 2. So let's see the first one is mast cells and it will be matched with areolar connective tissue. Okay. It is related to areolar connective tissue. So this tissue contains fibroblasts, fibroblasts. What are fibroblasts? These are the cells that produce and secrete fibers. Okay. So these fibroblasts secrete fibers. Now other than the fibroblasts, the areolar connective tissue also contain macrophages, macrophages, and mast cells. So here mast cells are mentioned so it will be matched with areolar connective tissue. So the correct match for A will be number 2. 
then the next one is inner surface of bronchioles so this is lined by which type of epithelium ciliated epithelium so the correct match for b will be number 1 then the third one is blood and we know that blood is a specialized connective tissue so it will be matched with number 4 okay specialized connective tissue and the last one is tubular parts of nephron so these parts are lined by cuboidal epithelium so the correct match for d will be number 3 So according to this, the correct answer is option number B. Okay, A two, B one, C four, and D three. Now question number ninety nine is from the chapter structural organization in animals, and the question is in cockroach excretion is brought about by options are phallic gland, uricose gland, nephrocytes, fat body, and collateral glands. So we know that in cockroach excretion is brought about by malpighian tubules. malpighian tubules then fat body nephrocytes and uricose gland okay uricose glands so all of them are involved in the process of excretion so here malpighian tubule is not mentioned but uricose gland is given nephrocytes is given and fat body is given so these three are involved in the process of excretion okay phallic gland and collateral glands are not involved because phallic gland is the structure of male reproductive system of the cockroach okay this is the structure of structure of male reproductive system system of cockroach and what is the function it secretes the outer layer of spermatophore okay it secretes the outer layer of spermatophore and what is collateral gland it is the structure of female reproductive system okay so let's write it down here collateral glands collateral glands structure of female reproductive female reproductive system of cockroach and what does it do it secretes secretes the hard egg case okay egg case or oothika which is known as oothika around the fertilized egg around the fertilized egg so these two phallic gland and collateral glands are involved in reproduction whereas other three are involved in excretion so b c and d that means option b will be the correct answer and now the last question is from the chapter animal kingdom and the question is select the correct statements with reference to chordates first statement is presence of mid dorsal solid and double nerve cord so this is not correct with reference to chordates why because the chordates have dorsal dorsal hollow and single nerve cord right single nerve cord then the next one is presence of closed circulatory system yes it is correct then the third one is presence of paired pharyngeal gill slits this is also correct next is presence of dorsal heart no because they have ventral heart okay chordates have ventral heart at the front side not at the back side then the last one is triplo triploblastic pseudo coelomate animals so triploblastic is correct but pseudo coelomate is incorrect it will be coelomate okay coelomate animals so only b and c are correct that means option a b and c only will be the answer here okay 
So here we complete all the biology questions from NEET 2023 paper. That's it for today. We'll be back with another session soon. Till then, keep learning, keep scoring high. For a better understanding, you can just practice the same questions from our website www.examsnet.com. And for more information, you can download our app from the link given below in the description box. Thank you so much.